Good evening and welcome to Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman. I'm so delighted that you're here with me this evening. Tonight, we are gonna talk about after a heart attack. There are a lot of things that happen. After working 14 years in the cardiac area, I have seen firsthand what happens with a heart attack when you come in, you go into the cath lab or you have to be rushed to, this, to the OR for surgery. There's a lot that can happen and there's a lot that happens on discharge as well. So we're gonna discuss that tonight, but first let me um, go through my little disclaimer that I have for you. Just to, to let you know that the show and all the content are for educational purposes only. It is not intended to treat, to diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease or psychological disorder. A specific physician patient or pharmacist patient relationship is necessary before any medical therapies are initiated. Please consult your qualified healthcare provider, such as your physician or your pharmacist, with any questions about your medical conditions or before starting or using any dietary supplements, herbal remedies, exercise, or nutrition plans. And so who is Dr. Melissa? Well, I am a pharmacist. I've been in the healthcare industry for over 26 years, focusing on both Eastern and Western medicine. There is a time and a place for prescription medication, over-the-counter medication, and supplements. And there's a time and a place when we do nothing or we do supplements or we do oils or something else. Sometimes a lot of alternative medicine is complementary to a traditional Western medicine. With over 52,000 clinical hours, I have helped thousands and thousands of patients to optimize their health, streamlining their medications or ditching those pills that are not necessary, ditching those supplements that are not necessary, ditching those supplements that are not um, a good quality supplement. I help you get down to the root cause of the problem. And my physician friends call me a D prescriber because I do get rid of those excessive medications that are that you're just utilizing to prevent a side effect of another medication. So let's get to that root cause of the problem. And we will talk a little bit more about that here today, especially as we are talking about our heart attack. So I am your concierge pharmacist, and I am happy to be with you here tonight and discussing the information about after a heart attack, because there's a lot of things that happen. And when you have a heart attack, so let's go through a few statistics first. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, okay? The most common heart disease is coronary artery disease. So it's hardening of the arteries, which can lead to a heart attack. And what happens with a heart attack is when the narrowing or the blocked coronary blood vessel is prevented. So normally you have flow here through this. So you could, you have blood flow through here and then all of a sudden it becomes blocked where you don't get any blood flow at all. Sometimes you get a teeny tiny bit less, but what happens is that blood flow shuts off and your heart is not able to get the necessary blood supply. There it's called a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And every year, over 800,000 people, 800,000 people have a heart attack in the United States, okay? Now, medicine has come a very long way. And often, if you get to the hospital in time, that first heart attack, we're able to treat, we're able to get you to the cath lab, we're able to get you to the OR, get you to the necessary treatment in these days in order to um, make it so that we can open up that blood vessel and so that you're able to walk out of that hospital. Now, many, many years ago, that wasn't always the case, okay? But once you've had your first heart attack, you are at a greater risk of having another one you are at a greater risk of having another one. After you do survive your heart attack, one out of every five people, one out of every five will be readmitted 
to the hospital with a second heart attack within five years. Now let that set in because those are not, they're not great odds. That's 20%. That's 20%. Right now, it's one in three. One out of every three women will have a heart attack. So we're looking around this audience here. Look at that. One out of every three. So those are staggering statistics. Now, there's some things that happen, and these are things that are necessary to happen, okay? Because they do help prevent that second heart attack. They help prevent some, um, your body, to help protect your body to heal after you've had that first heart attack. And so what tonight we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about these medications. And there is a host, a series of medications that are prescribed after you have a heart attack. And I was actually on the team that helped to set up this um, at our hospital. There was a, a guy in, an, in another state who started the protocol and we went by and we actually initiated this protocol at our hospital. Now, let me tell you that this is necessary. Now your physician will tell you, once you've had your heart attack, you're gonna be on these medications for life. Now that is not always the case. There is a time and a place where you might be able to come off these medications, but other things have to take place, okay? So I wanna go through the medications with you, what they do for you, and then let's talk about some things that can help you so that if you don't wanna be taking a bucket load of medications for the rest of your life, what we can do to ditch those pills after we've allowed your body to heal and protect it from getting that second heart attack because your risk is higher. So let's talk about reducing your risk, okay? That's the whole point behind these medications. These medications are to help reduce your risk of having that second heart attack. And we target things that are affecting your heart, okay? Your blood pressure your cholesterol. Now we also now target these days, lifestyle changes, quitting smoking, improving your physical activity, promoting your weight management, blood clot prevention, okay? So blood clot prevention is a huge thing. And that is something because you've already had that blockage, okay? So we've already closed that gap. Now we've opened it back up but we don't wanna get a clot in there. We don't want it to be blocked again, okay? So we want to give you a medication called an antiplatelet medication. Now there's a couple of different ones out there. And an antiplatelet medication is a medication that helps to stop the platelets or the blood cells that are involved in clotting in your blood from binding together and forming those clots, okay? So what it does is it helps keep the blood flowing through the vessel so that it doesn't get stuck in your heart and cause another heart attack, okay? Now, there's two very common types of antiplatelet. The first is called aspirin. You've probably heard of aspirin. It's available over the counter. Um, and most of the time, your physician is gonna say, you're gonna take this for the rest of your life, unless you have a contraindication, because it's gonna help prevent another heart attack from occurring. Um, it's an 81 milligram aspirin. Now there's pros and cons. If you have, if you have any kind of bleeding history, then there might be a contraindication. Now it just depends upon your history and what else is going on. It may be that you're only on it for a short period of time, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent a second heart attack. Side effects of that aspirin, it can upset your stomach. It can cause heartburn. It can raise your risk of bleeding because it is making those platelets not stick together. Now, the second antiplatelet medication is called a P2Y12 inhibitor. Wow, what does that mean? So a P2Y12 inhibitor, what it does is it helps to prevent 
the platelets from sticking together as again from sticking together and causing clots. Now there's medications in this class of P2Y12 inhibitors, um, clopidogrel, Plavix, Prostagrel, Efficent, and Ticregular or Berlinta. Now very, very similar to aspirin in that it can increase your bleeding risk, but sometimes you need to be on both aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor at the same time. Now you'll want to at, talk to your physician and find out how long you need to be on this. Most of the time when you're on a P2Y12 inhibitor, it's for six to 12 months post heart attack, okay? So it doesn't mean for the rest of your life, six to 12 months. Now, depending upon your risk, you may or may not be on that, baby, that low dose aspirin, but we want to make sure, especially right after your heart attack, that we prevent you from having another one. We want to protect your heart. We want to protect your blood vessels and we want to keep your blood flowing. So we don't want those platelets to stick together and form a clot, okay? So that's very, very important. Now, the other medication that you'll probably leave with is called a statin. Now, a statin medication is a medication that helps to lower that cholesterol. Now, there's people who come into the hospital they will have a heart attack. We check their levels. Their cholesterol may be low. Just because your levels are low when you have a heart attack, it does not mean that your cholesterol is low, okay? So there's, there's some things going on physiologically there that your cholesterol can still increase after a heart attack. And so this is a medication that has been shown to be beneficial to help reduce the, the chance of your cholesterol being raised. So after a heart attack, if you came in and your cholesterol was sky high, you may have already been on a statin or you may have been started a statin. Um, but after a heart attack, this is part of the protocol that we send you on a statin. And this helps to reduce that risk of the high cholesterol, which is a known risk factor for heart disease, coronary artery disease, which leads to a heart attack or another heart attack. So, the statin medications out there, there's pros and cons to the statin medications, and we'll be talking more specifically in detail about those in the future. Some people don't tolerate statins well. Um, some people get muscle spasms, they have um, upset stomach, they get um, maybe some memory issues where they can't remember certain things. Now, this is this not not 100%, not, not common. And very, very rare is a condition called rhabdomyolysis. Now, rhabdomyolysis results in kidney damage from your muscles breaking down. Now, if that were to happen, um, it also, they can, it can cause severe liver disease, which is also rare, but rhabdomyolysis and liver disease, those are two things. If you start having that muscle pain or that weakness, you need to talk to your, your physician or your pharmacist right away. So we can triage it and find out is the root cause of the medication or is there something else going on? We want to protect you from having that second heart attack. Um, now we, there's risk and there's pros and cons, whether or not you're put on a statin. So we look at the benefit of it. Um, it does follow a protocol to be put on a statin, but it may not be the best choice for you. And it may be something that it's a short term medication for you to help protect you in that immediate effect. Um, timeline after that first heart attack. Okay. Now the next medication is called a beta blocker. Now a beta blocker is a medication that binds to um, certain receptors that help to lower your heart rate and to lower your blood pressure. Okay. So these beta blockers, what they do is they help reduce that stress right after the heart attack by lowering that heart rate. Um, and so there's a couple of different ones that we like to give after a heart attack. Um, the most common that we do is metoprolol or toprol. It's metoprolol succinate. So there's a couple of different forms. And we also like bisoprolol, bisoprolol okay? Now those two are shown, they've been proven in studies to lessen the chance of the risk of dying after a heart attack, okay? 
So there's also another medication called um, carvedilol. It's another beta blocker. It's acts it acts to lower your heart rate and lower your blood pressure, but it's just slightly different in that um, it doesn't act exactly like that visoprolol or the metoprolol, but it might be a better choice for you. So depending upon your physician, your condition um, will determine which medication you're put on and that medication to help reduce your risk of dying, to reduce your risk of having a second heart attack. Now, it does not mean that you're going to have to be on it forever because there's things that we're going to incorporate, such as those lifestyle changes. So we're going to be looking at your nutrition. We're going to be looking at your movement. We're going to look at your other medications that you're taking. We're going to look at your supplementation. We're going to look at your lifestyle. And when we look at that lifestyle, we want to really incorporate that whole picture, that whole body health picture, because after a heart attack, you need to determine for yourself, you want to live. You made it through this and you want to live. You want to live longer. You want to see your grandkids get married, graduate from college, whatever it is. You want to play with your kiddos, your grandkids. You want to be able to go for a walk. You want to watch the sunset, the sunrise. You want to go on that cruise. These are things that you want. And so we wanna make you the healthiest that you can be. And so there's things that happen. You go through some physical therapy. We call it cardiac rehab. We put you through to make sure that you're physically, because your heart is, your heart had stopped. It was blocked, it stopped, okay? A myocardial infarction, a heart attack. It arrested and so now it's back together, it's pumping again. And we want to make sure that you're physically fit. We also have got to pull in those mental and emotional pieces. Emotionally, having a heart attack is stressful. Was it your lifestyle that caused it? Was it your work? Was it your family? Was it your unhealthy eating habits? Was it your lack of physical activity? Was it your genetics? What was it that caused that to happen? We don't know exactly. We can delve down and we can, we can ask, but what caused that? So when we're looking at those beta blockers, we're helping to reduce your risk of a heart attack the second time around. Now those beta blockers reduce your heart rate, they can cause some dizziness. They might cause you to be sluggish or fatigued and they potentially can lower your libido. Now, those are things that can affect you. Now, as I said earlier, you may not have to be on them for the rest of your life, but for a short period of time for sure, because we wanna protect you from having that second heart attack. Another medication that you might go, that you will probably go home from the hospital after having a heart attack is an ACE inhibitor. So an ACE inhibitor is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, or you might go home on an um, angioretensin receptor blocker. So those are two medications. They're very similar. Um, the ACE inhibitors are typically the first choice. Those are the ones that we set in the guidelines to be um, to help protect your heart, to help protect your kidneys. But I'll, some people have a, a dry cough from those ACE inhibitors. So you may be then switched to an angiotensin receptor blocker. Um, those medications, likely your provider is gonna tell you that you're gonna be on them for the rest of your life, but it may not be necessary. So as we're protecting you during that short, that period of time that you are at more risk greater risk to be having that second heart attack, we need to be on that. But there may become a period of time where you might be able to get off of that medication. Okay. Now, these are several medications that you're given after you have a heart attack. And there's protocols behind them. There's studies behind them that support this evidence. We also know 
that having that physical therapy, that cardiac rehab is very, very key. That's why they prescribe it. Looking at your nutrition, looking to see how we can make sure and incorporate more healthier options into your lifestyle. How can we incorporate healthier movement activities so that your chances of having that second heart attack are lowered? Now, if you have already diabetes, kidney problems, or high blood pressure, you probably went into the hospital on other medications. Those medications may have to be adjusted because you went in with a heart attack. You will depend upon what you're already on, plus your physician, plus what is best for you to help prevent that second heart attack in that short term. When we look at the emotional aspect of having a heart attack, there are so many things that mainstream medicine doesn't really look at. You have just stopped your heart. How did that make you feel? What did your family think? What did your friends think? You're given a second chance? When you think of it that way, because like I said earlier, so many things have changed in mainstream medicine. Many, many years ago, if you had a heart attack and you did not get, you, you, your chances of getting to the hospital and getting into the cath lab or getting into surgery were not as quick. And the chances of survival were a lot lower. The chances of survival of the first heart attack are a lot higher these days because we have protocols in place. At that first sign, you get in, you get to the cath lab, you get that, that artery, that um, vessel opened and restoring that blood flow. And it's very important that you pay attention and you follow the directions. You go home on these medications for a short term. This would be the term where these medications are appropriate for that short term. Now, I don't believe that you have to be on them forever. I truly believe that if you start changing with your lifestyle, if you look at the whole body health program and incorporate physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional well being into your recovery, then after a certain period of time, usually that, that, that extreme period is that first year is your highest, your absolute highest risk to have a second heart attack. Now, it does go up to five years, as I said earlier. Um, 20% will end up back in the hospital within five years, but that first year is a critical year. And so we have to make sure that your platelets are not sticking together, that your cholesterol is in check, that your heart rate is in check, that your stress level is down. Because these all play a role. These all play a role. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference to your loved ones. How are they responding that, that you had a heart attack? Are they supportive when you get back home? Because these heart attacks, they're very, very scary. We're concerned about our loved ones when they happen. Is it going to happen again? Did you have a family history? There's a lot of things that can happen. But as I said, medicine has improved so many ways. So I don't want you to be a statistic. I don't want you to be the leading cause of death. I want you to be preventative and look at your lifestyle right now. What are some things that you can incorporate to make things better for you? Incorporating more nutritious foods into your, into your, um, your intake, incorporating movement, functional movement, walking, taking the stairs, swimming, biking, whatever's fun for you, moving your body so that your muscles stay active, looking at your, phys your mental and emotional well-being. Are you reading daily? Are you learning something? Are you 
Are you strengthening your brain on a day-to-day -day basis? So as we talked about the different medications that can happen after a heart attack, and we talk about how to prevent that second heart attack. With whole body health, we also talk about, let's not even have that first heart attack. And so I do wanna share with you, just for you watching tonight, I do have a special for you. If you go to drmelissabadizan.com forward slash TV, you can see I have a special for you there. You can go in and get this um, ebook that talks about how, what questions you should ask of your healthcare provider before starting a medication or before starting a supplement. You can also look at the whole body health package and see if that's right for you. Have you already had a heart attack? Are you wanting to prevent your first heart attack? Or are you wanting to prevent your second? These are things that we look at. And so I invite you to take a look at that page just for you. I have for you, drmelissabalizan.com forward slash TV. And remember, take care of your body now. You only get one body. You only get one health. So take care of it now and have a super healthy, amazing day.